Oh, hi there. This is Below Tool, and this is part two of the summary of the tools listed in ISO 31010. These are advanced risk tools, and I'm applying them to events. And this is the list of the tools. If you remember in part one, I showed you this and uh, you can find ISO 31010 online, you pay for it. Uh, and these are the tools that they're recommending. They're all advanced tools and for an events person, a lot of these are mathematical ones. And uh, with my background in mathematics and events, I'll be able to explain quite a few of them to you. From that, you'll be able to understand how they work and decide whether you want to use them for your next festival or event. Part uh, two is what we're doing today. We did uh, part one before, and I didn't start on the actual tools because you had to understand a little bit about logic first. And the main thing about logic is that uh, events and risks at events can be catastrophic. And uh, in other words, people lose their lives. So. Although you can do inductive and deductive logic, there is, of course, what we call the black swan, which can be catastrophes. And this had to do with complexity of events, and anyone who's run events knows how complex they can be on the day. And how you can think of things, because a lot of this has to do with thinking. You have to look at the limitations of probability and frequency analysis, okay, and the biases that you would normally have. And the way to get around these things is obviously to have meetings with a variety of people, people with different backgrounds, particularly operational experience. What we're going to go through now are the next three tools that you'll find in the uh, standard, causal analysis, bow tie analysis, and sensitivity analysis. And I'll go through each of those. Just before we do, we'll just have a quick uh, look at these things. And these are some of the terms that are used in risk management. And uh, I'll be explaining as we go through. And don't forget, risk is about forecasting. Okay, so you're trying to predict what could go wrong and how you're going to minimize it or how you're going to deal with it if it does happen. Now, these sort of things are found in other disciplines, obviously engineering, but have a think of medicine is a big part of that because what a, a doctor is doing is looking at symptoms and then going back to the cause. And that's very much what we'll be doing in uh, this little uh, 10, 15 minute um, presentation. <clears throat> These are called upstream risks. In other words, uh, management decisions that are made and result in disasters at events. Okay, so to get used to these terms, upstream risks, okay. We'll be looking at causal inference. In other words, uh, what makes something happen, the cause of it, okay? But that's not good enough. You have to look at what are called factor analysis. In other words, you could have the cause of the risk, but there are factors that make it a lot worse. And uh, as it says here, a factor for violence uh, at an event is alcohol, right? Uh, but a non-alcohol event can still be violent. You've got to keep all this sort of logic in mind. It can be, when people get emotional talking about risk management, uh, you can often lose focus on the actual logic. You really have to focus on that logic. And uh, in terms of uh, terminology of logic, it's necessary and sufficient for the disaster to happen. This will be clearer as we go through. So let's have a look at the first tool. First one is called causal analysis, and it's basically having a look at a disaster or an incident or risks that actually happened, <clears throat> and then going back and having a look at what is the likely cause. Now, you get that likely. We're back to probability again, likely cause. So this was one that happened in Romania at a venue in Romania, and uh, quite a lot of people died in the aftermath of the event too, I might add. Anyway, the pyrotechnics were used indoors. You see this quite a lot around the world. It always seems to be happening. Uh, the, uh, event, uh, the venue had flammable material. Okay, so it went up very quickly and uh, inadequate and unmarked. Egg. Where did I get this from? If you go on the web, you'll find the reports on this and the coronial inquiry because the lawsuits and class actions went for a long time afterwards. Remember, if that's your event, that's you. 
So you want to have a look at disasters and work your way back uh, and look at what the causes were. And that's how you actually do a causal analysis. Okay, so you have, uh, by the way, the government collapsed as a result of this. Uh, there was so much corruption, people knew it. And uh, there were standards. And this is a very important point, by the way. It's, it's all very cute to have standards. But you've got to remember they've got to be enforced. And, and uh, this is this is a big issue now, by the way. Uh, people think that just by writing standards, therefore, they're fine. So what you do with causal analysis is take away one of those. So we'll go back, overcrowd a club, we take that away. Now, would this still result in the deaths if there are less people at the venue? How many deaths? And that's what you're looking at there. You look at each aspect of these things. For example, let's say you still had all of those, but one of the exits was marked okay, as an exit. Would it have led to the numbers of deaths? And that's where you actually think through something that's happened in the past. That's why information about these things is so important. Uh, the next a tool that you can use is called fault tree analysis or effect to cause. And it's very similar to the one you just saw. Okay. But basically you're saying, here's a disaster. Let's say the stage collapses at our event. What could cause that? Okay. And you go back and uh, do what's called an Isikawa diagram as well. This is a, They're all very similar sort of things. Uh, we can't go into any great detail on this. You can get books on this. I mean, there's thick books you can, you can read about, and there's heavy-duty software that you can use for this. But this is an introduction to it, so you'll know what they're talking about when these things come up. And if you need to, you can go into them in much greater depth. So you can see here what's happened here is that we did a uh, brainstorm on this. <clears throat> and one of the things that happens with brainstorms, of course, people come up with all sorts of ridiculous things, but it may not be ridiculous. You never know. So the trick is to write it down. So you're looking at the possible causes right? Uh, that would create that effect. Uh, it's called effect of cause or fault tree analysis. Okay. Then you have a look at um, what each of these things contributed to the collapse of the stage. Now, perhaps it, they had a lot of these things happening at that time. You know, let's say that you're putting together a model of this, maybe a lot of these, all of these things happening. So which thing contributes to the possibility of stage collapse the most? Right? Is it the lack of a ground assessment? And of course, this is what's been pointed out in the past, okay. uh, is it uh, audience interference? The weight of the gear, the weight of people getting on the stage has caused stage collapse. And that's called sensitivity analysis. You're looking at, if you increase it by a fraction, will the stage collapse? You know, what is that fraction? And I'll talk about that in a second. The next one is called bow tie analysis. And this is an example of it. You're looking at before the incident, which is here, then you're looking at after the incident, uh, which is there, uh, and I'll explain the incident in a second. Now, these are the contributing things to minimise the risk of the incident itself. Uh, I won't go through them. They're pretty obvious. You'd know them. Uh, and you can see down here, this is over time. Prepare, plan, respond, and recover. This is pretty standard stuff, and this is what a bow tie analysis looks like. There's a lot of things before then there's the incident, and there's a lot of things afterwards. Uh, during the incident, you can see what's happening here. Uh, do you cancel the event? Do you evacuate, etc. And uh, the important thing here is the ethane, don't forget. Uh, and if you've not come across that, uh, most people doing large events would, because you generally have it on the uh, lanyard of the volunteers. And the reason, if, if there is an incident, all right, there's always something. Um, and they use the um, the phone or the uh, radio call. Uh, what do they say? Well, people get very emotional. So what they've done here is put together uh, a an acronym uh, so that they actually say the right things that need to be said over the mobile phone because everything, everything is about time. Time is critical, obviously, when there is an incident at your event. 
One of the more interesting ones is that hazards that are there. Well, when you're ringing emergency services, if you ever have to, um, you should be able to tell them if there are any other hazards. Just because there's an incident doesn't mean all the other hazards disappear. <laughs> so, uh, um, all right, uh, da, da, da. we're going to go on that later on, I think. Uh, we'll do sensitive, we'll just finish with sensitivity analysis because this is enough for the time being. I mean, there's three three things here that you've that I've given you. Uh, sensitivity analysis, once again, and it's a good example of the ISO 31010 and the <clears throat> technical uh, language of it that makes it sort of difficult to apply unless you're sort of an engineering background. Uh, individ, input parameters, what are they for heaven's sake? So input parameters, but basically what you're doing is looking at the factors and seeing which has the most influence on the disaster or the effect, okay? And then you're changing things gradually and seeing what the effect is. It's all, also called nudging, by the way. And you're looking at what wiggle room you have or what tolerance you have, and that's called sensitivity analysis. All right, well, it's the end of uh, part two, and we've gone through causal analysis, bow tie analysis, and sensitivity analysis. Obviously, I can't go into any depth with these things, and as I said, there's, there's whole books on each one of these things, but it's just to give you an introduction so that you can go out there and look up more things and see if it's applicable to your types of events. Uh, part three, uh, we'll be looking at Layers of protection, Bayesian analysis, and Markov chains. Now, these are highly technical things. You'll understand layers, Bayesian and Markov, you won't. And I'll show you how easy it is to apply these things to events.